Psalm 101. I will sing of loving kindness and justice. To you, O Yahweh, I will sing praises. I will consider the way of the blameless. When will you come to me? I will walk within my house in the integrity of my heart. I will set no vile thing before my eyes. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. A crooked heart shall depart from me. I will know no evil. Whoever secretly slanders his neighbor, him I will destroy. Whoever has a haughty look and an arrogant heart, I will not endure. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, and they may abide with me. He who walks in the way of the blameless is the one who will minister to me. He who practices deceit shall not dwell within my house. He who speaks lies shall not be established before my eyes. Every morning I will destroy all the wicked of the land to cut off from the city of Yahweh all the workers of iniquity. Psalm 101 is another one of those ones that's got a couple of layers to it, right? You can, you can read it and see everything that is being said and take those as propositional statements and walk away completely spiritually nourished, right? Um, and if we read it on that level and we stop there, which is a fine thing to do, I'm going to keep going, but if we just stop there, what we see is that God cares about ethics, right? God cares what we do. God cares about um, not... He cares primarily about the heart condition, right? Which is why he he passes over so many sins previously committed, and he's so forgiving. Like actions don't um, don't thwart his plans. He he you know man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. But he's also concerned about our actions. He loves ethical behavior. That's why he prescribes so much of it. That's why God is a God who gives a law to his people. And so we see here that those things do matter. We're not saved by our actions, and may you never think that, and may you never even hear your pastor saying that, that doesn't mean that actions don't matter, right? God rejoices in uprightness of uh, conduct as well as in uprightness of heart because the two go together. So here we've got David writing this psalm that says, I'm going to do right and I'm not going to tolerate any wrong. Well, that's a fine thing for David to say, but he didn't really live up to that, did he? Right? He, he, he did at times, and then other times he tolerated a lot of wrong, and he, he let a lot of evil people hang around him, and he became an evil person from time to time, and then he would you know, repent and, and follow God again, and then the cycle would kind of repeat itself eventually. So he's saying here more than he lived, which, look, I'm not going to knock him too much for that. I'm a preacher. I often have to say more than I live. I have to prescribe perfection, and I don't live up to that. So I, I understand it from that perspective, but also... How can you say something like this with a straight face, right? Like, I will walk within my house in the integrity of my heart. Like, who can pull that off? And that's what leads you into the, other, the next layer of reading Psalm 101, which is, I don't, this doesn't sound like a man talking at a certain point. This sounds like God talking. Now, you can say this stuff as a king, right? I'll let people live in the land who are upright, and I'm only going to let people minister to me who are flawless. You can say that if you're a king. You probably can't say it with total integrity, but you can say it. And, and intend to follow through on it. But there's a certain point where you read this and you just say, this sounds like God talking, right? Look at verse 6. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may abide with me. He who walks in the, in the way of the blameless is the one who will minister to me. He who practices deceit shall not dwell within my house. This all sounds very Yahwistic, to use the old theological term. It sounds like Yahweh talking, right? So that brings us to the point that Yet nobody can say this with total integrity. David, who wrote the thing, can't live this out perfectly. The only person who can actually live this out perfectly turns out to be God himself, and Jesus Christ did that, being fully God, fully man, fully king, right? As we saw back in Psalm 100, he's the only one that can actually fulfill this. So thank God that he did, because otherwise we would never be able to read this. We have to read this through the lens of Christ, or else it's just going to be hopeless condemnation and laying down an impossible standard, you know, like, uh, like we see so many times in the Bible. But this brings me to an interesting point, which is why this uh, uh, devotion may be a little bit longer than normal. Your pastors, specifically one of them, by the way, whose name rhymes with Ben, um, is always, always, always harping on, and I'm always quoting him on this because it's great, he's always harping on the fact that Christianity is not a religion of do better, try harder. That's every other religion, but that is, well, that's every system of religion. That is not... Christianity. That is not the relationship that God has laid out for us where we are justified by doing better and trying harder. And so how is it then that we have this commandment 
to be absolutely perfect. And this is in our Christian scriptures. Because when I read this, if I'm like, if I'm going to do this, i got to do better and try harder. So, to discuss the, the integration in the Christian life of ethics and gospel, of conduct and grace, I have brought in an expert in the matter. Did you like that? An expert in the matter? I've brought in Pastor Ben Nissen. Please join the Monday morning gospel <laughs> devotion. Yeah! You guys didn't see the extra chair sitting there. We're doing the, this. The expert. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, Pastor Ben, is Christianity a religion of do better, try harder? It, the, the, so this, you, you, the, just thought, you just saw Ben throw up in his mouth a little bit. That's what that was. Yeah, no, it, no, it's not. It, it, we do not do better or try harder to earn our salvation. Absolutely not. Is it a... Is it a... Um, is it a religion that that has ethics and it, there's ethics ex expected? Yes, ethical behavior is expected. Mm -hmm. The Lord loves that. He loves it when His children are walking in the truth. I mean, those are those are things that we want too. And, and when, when we're when we're impacted by the truth, then then it does have its own natural outcome in our life. And we certainly in, in John. The Apostle John writes about this all the time. No one can say, I know him, and yet walk in darkness. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can't, we can't go there. Yeah. So, so there is, um, I think I like Paul, what Paul Washer said once. He said this in a sermon. He said, you know, if, if you get hit by a truck, there's going to be evidence. The gospel is a truck. And if you get hit by a truck, we'll know about it. Yeah, it's kind of like Jesus says, you will be known by your fruits, yes. right? Or they will be known by their, exactly. by their fruits. And so the, when there's a heart change... There's an outworking of that heart change because your heart, your motivational center, why you do what you do, that that leads to certain actions, certain words, and so yeah. on. So fruit is what we can yeah. evaluate. And I, and I would even and and, and I'm not I, I'm I'm making some logical connections, which uh, and, and looking at this psalm, right? You have you have the author of the psalm saying he's going to worship, he's going to sing of the steadfast love and justice of the Lord. He will ponder the way that is blameless. Um, and then, you know, ask, oh, when will you come to me, right? There is something thought-provoking here. There is a, an attitude of worship that is happening, and then you start to see the other aspects of walking in integrity and mm -hmm. not setting before my eyes. That even with the Christian walk, it starts with an attitude of worship. Out of the abundance and of the heart, exactly. the mouth speaks, and a heart full of worship Absolutely. yields the fruit of worship. Yeah, and this is where Christian ethics really begins. And there's been, you know, there, there is a whole bunch of the New Testament dedicated to what we ought to be doing, right? And it, like, I love the way Paul structures this in his letters because he goes with what we believe first and then what we do after, right? Orthodoxy into orthopraxy. And so there's a massive set of discussions in the New Testament on our ethics, on what we do. But it's all from the point of regeneration on, right? None of that leads up to our being born again. So after the New Testament, we've had 2,000 years now of Christian history discussing ethics. And it's, it's, there's some great stuff in there. Francis Schaeffer writes a book called How Then Shall We Live, yeah. right? John Owen writes a book called The Mortification of Sin, in which he famously states, be killing sin or it will be killing you. This is great stuff, right? This, is, this stuff is solid gold, and we ought to be taking instruction from it. Will any of this, will, will following any of that instruction save us? Not a bit. No. And don't think it. But boy, once we're saved, oh man, th th does that enrich our lives? To, to follow God and submit our ways to His plans and His decrees. Right? I mean, that's, that's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. You know, do, not, do not depend on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. Yeah. That's an ethical outworking of our inward acknowledgement of, of Him. So, last question for you. Sure. Did you have another place you were going to go? Well, no, I was just going to say, you know, the, the whole idea of even um, Paul calling us to walk in a manner worthy of the calling which we have received, right? And mm -hmm. as, he's, as he's calling for this ethical change in Ephesians chapter 4, he's seeing this walk in a manner worthy that is dignified of what has just been happened, that what has just happened to you. There's an aspirational call, uh, there's an aspirational aspect of that. There's a desire, a strong desire to to glorify God with my actions. That's the first thing on our minds. And you, I mean, you say this all the time when sometimes in the morning, it's like when you wake up, God, thank you for waking me up. How can I walk, how can I walk with you? I mean, it's mm -hmm. just that that should be on the Christian's mind every, all the time. How do I glorify God in what I'm going to do? That's ethical action. Yeah. But the heart is, 
I want to worship. I want to glorify God with my life. Yeah, I think uh, in Western Christianity, we've reacted so hard against legalism, and rightly so, right? Yeah. We, we, we got we to be sticking a knife in the gut of legalism all the time because that's the, the kind of the, the reflex of... The, of the religious impulse is like, yeah. okay, do better, try harder, and that's what we're going to tend to. So we always got to be killing that idea. But there, there is such thing as an overreaction to the point where all we ever talk about is salvation, right? Yeah. Get to the point of salvation. Get to the point of conversion. All that matters is leading people to Christ. Mm -hmm. But Jesus doesn't say that. He says, no, make disciples, right? Yes. You got to follow Christ. The point isn't just to get saved. Nope. The point is to follow Christ with the rest of your life. Now we're talking about... Yeah ethical action. Now that leads us into yeah. eternal life. And Jesus even says, teaching them to obey. Mm. So it, it's not it's part just, of the Great Commission. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So when a Christian, a, a disciple, a follower of Christ is reading, let's say the Old Testament, let's just narrow it down, reading the law mm -hmm. or Psalm 101 or whatever mm -hmm. and saying, okay, this is prescribing a certain type of behavior. One, one reaction, I'm going to ask you to, to carve out a middle way for us here. Mm -hmm. One reaction is to say, well, that's law. That doesn't apply to me. I'm reading it as history. Mm -hmm. That was for them. The other reaction is to say, man, I'm doing terrible. I need to do better because God's probably not mad. He's, he's probably mad at me because I haven't done well enough. Mm -hmm. So either forget about it. It's law mm -hmm. or it's crushing me because I'm not keeping the law. Mm -hmm. Neither of these are gospel responses to God's commands. Yeah. How, how are we supposed to read the commands of God for ethical behavior? What's supposed to enter into our minds yeah. when we read these things? I think I'd look at them relationally. God has adopted you as his child. Therefore, some. you can do these things. You have the, I mean, think about it, believer. Seriously, you have the Holy Spirit dwelling within you, which means not only are these commands possible, but you can glorify God in them. You can do these things outside of the Holy Spirit's work. You can do these things even not being a Christian, but are they glorifying to God? Well, Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6 would say, no, that's filthy rags filthy to rag. him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Romans 14, 23, whatever is not of faith is sin. Yeah, right? so instead you can actually do this as a, look at these familially. Right? This is possible for me as a redeemed child of God, and I can do these things through Christ. That's why Paul would always say, right, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Our union with Christ is what not only makes these makes ethical living possible in, a, in the long term, it also then gives a, it, we, we can do so in a way which glorifies God versus just mm -hmm. saying, okay, here's a checklist of things I got to do. There you go. Yeah, there's no life in a checklist, right? Especially when, uh, since uh, we don't keep it. <laughs> but Okay, so this week, so it's Monday morning, you're getting this. This week, what do we do, right? This week for your Monday morning gospel, we get to celebrate that we get to live out the gospel, right? We actually get to live under the hand of the Lord and, and his commandments are not burdensome to us. They're, they're good. And when we fail to keep his commandments, Praise God. He's, you know, the, the blood of Jesus covers us. We were Christians, man. We yeah. repent, we move on. We go back to him and we and we keep on rocking. But you you are allowed. I want to liberate your conscience here. You are allowed, disciple, to take joy in beautiful ethical behavior. Please do. As long as it's done in faith, right? Yeah. So this week, you know, li live out the law of Christ, which essentially love God, love your neighbor, but you're going to have a whole lot of commands in the Bible and it, it can be your joy to live them out. And so go, go live out the law of Christ because the law is good if one uses it lawfully. Have a great week.